Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting green thumb and I'm sipping on some mango tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, fluorescent pink, deep yellow, and green oxide. And of course, you could switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number nine round synthetic brush and I have a number five round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice neutral medium to dark gray color. And that'll be the um, dominant color in my background, but I'm gonna have it a little bit lighter at the top and a little bit darker down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself this medium to dark gray color, and I have magically pre-mixed some of mine already, so you can see where I'm headed. I am gonna need some of my um, regular brown for later, so I'm actually gonna take some of that and separate it out. That way I don't run the risk of mixing too much and not having any brown left over. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my brown and just a touch of white. And then I'm gonna turn my palette here so we can all see this. And then I'm gonna start spinning it around. What I'm really just looking for is a nice kind of medium to dark neutral gray type of color. I do need quite a bit of it because I'm gonna be painting the the entire canvas with it. I'm gonna add a little bit more black so it can be a little bit more on the grayer side and just a touch more white. So if it's too brown for you, you just add a little bit more black and a little bit more white and that'll turn it into that grayish type of tone for you. And then once you've got the color that is appealing to you, it just know it will turn a little bit darker as it dries, so just kind of visually plan for that. And then once you've got it, this is about where I'm headed, what I'm gonna do with my dirty brush I'm gonna wipe it off on the side of my palette, and then I'm gonna pick up white paint with my dirty brush. I'm gonna start at the top of my canvas with my pre-mixed gray plus white on my brush because I want the top of my canvas to be a little bit lighter than the bottom of my canvas. So this way, it'll appear that there is some sort of light source in the atmosphere of our painting. So it'll show that the upper portion is a little bit lighter. And when we go to paint our flowers and all that good stuff, we'll have the implication of a light source. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, without washing my brush, I'm gonna be picking up my pre-mixed gray color. And I put it a little bit lower and then I just kind of back it up into that previous section so they, so they blend nicely together. You can overlap them. If you feel you need a little bit more white, like I feel like I want just a little bit more white in this section to get it to blend in a little bit, you can certainly pick up white 
at any time. And then I just kind of keep blending it. I'm gonna keep blending it down my canvas so that way it will look like these two sections really blend in well together. And then once I've got a nice blend going, then I'm really just gonna kind of paint in the rest of my canvas you with that um, pre-mixed gray color. So I'm not washing my brush, so whatever remnants of the lighter version of it are on my brush will work themselves off and it'll naturally get darker and darker as I work my way down the canvas. You might find that you want yours a little bit lighter or darker than mine. Whatever is visually appealing to you is totally fine. I'm just going for a nice neutral tone so when I put those flowers and the hand on there, they'll all really just pop out and they'll be the star of the show as opposed to my background. My background it, for this um, one is just intended to be an enhancement, a complementary kind of color to make my, my painting really pop the way that I want it to. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. If you want to, you can even paint the edges or the sides of your canvas as you're going through this painting process and that'll make your, your, your painting look all nice and complete like a nice professional um, finished type of fine artwork. And then once you've got this all done, we are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. You might also find that you want to do a second coat on this. If it's a little bit too streaky for you or you didn't get your colors to blend the way that you want, just let it dry and then you can come back and just do a second coat. You, find, you see I like to go back and forth to just to make sure I have a nice even kind of thickness to my paint. And then once you've got that done, you can put your large brush away, take out your chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our hand. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So we're just gonna be going for a nice basic outline of the hand in like this position, well, wait, this position. <laughs> um, but you can certainly make yours more detailed, but I'm just gonna go for a basic outline so when we go to color it in with paint, we'll have a nice, a nice shape to start with. So I'm gonna give you some dots. We'll connect the dots and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have something that looks like it's in this shape. <laughs> so on the bottom portion of my canvas, I'm gonna come in I would say about four inches from the bottom and give myself a little bit of a marker. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the left side. I'm gonna come in, I would say about four inches, somewhere in through here, give myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna kind of split the difference between those two and go up about six inches or so, somewhere in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from here about half the distance, so somewhere about here, and then over to the left about an inch, somewhere in through here. And then we're gonna connect our dots. <laughs> so we're gonna connect this dot to here, and then this dot to here. This one to here is gonna represent the left side of our thumb. So I'm gonna take this dot, and I'm gonna go up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna curve it back down into that dot in through here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect here to here. This is gonna represent this portion of the hand. We're just gonna be doing the top two fingers right in through here. So it's gonna represent this portion and then the end of this knuckle and the end of this knuckle. That's my professional visual effects for you, <laughs> visual references. So I'm gonna take it from here and I'm going to, actually, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a marker first. If you wanna come up from this dot, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, give yourself a dot so that way you don't make this top one too skinny. And then what you'll do is you're gonna take this from here, bring it out a little bit past this dot in through here, kind of like a little curve in through there and then do the same thing for here, just a little bit down in through here and then just kind of curve that into there. And then we're gonna connect here to here, which is gonna represent this portion, the outside portion of the thumb and this little knuckle here. So I'm gonna take this from here and I'm just gonna kind of come in kind of a straight-ish type of motion down like this and then I'm gonna just bump it out like that 
and back out into there. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. You can certainly adjust this to make it look more like your thumb or whatever that you'd like. We're gonna be hiding a lot of the shape with some greenery from our flowers. Um, but once you get that done, you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat of our hand. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are pink, yellow, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a skin tone, and then I'm just gonna paint in the base coat with that skin tone. So I have, again, just magically pre-mixed the, the skin tone that I'm gonna be looking for. So how I got to that, or something similar, how I got to that was I mixed some of my yellow some of my pink, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. So you can make your skin tone any shade you would like. If you want yours lighter or darker or more yellow or more pink, feel free to mix yours in whatever tonal value that you would like. I have a tendency of just kind of using my own skin to as a reference point, but usually you know, it turns out a little bit darker because I'm so pale. <laughs> to make it look natural, sometimes it ends up a little bit darker than my skin. So this is about where I'm headed, but if you wanted yours lighter or darker, you can certainly adjust it. It will turn a little bit darker when it sits on top of this dark background. So just know that that will happen. And we also will be doing highlights and shadows on this skin after it's dry. So whatever color it turns out, if it's not exactly how you had planned or if you feel like it's too light or too dark know that you will have the opportunity on the next step to adjust it into whatever um, value that you would like i do know that um, again mine will turn a little bit darker as as it dries but i know that i like to sometimes go with a little bit darker of a base tone anyways because it makes building my highlights and shadows a little bit easier for me um, but that's that's going to be a personal preference on your part and i'm just doing a nice thin coat throughout the whole thing bringing it right up to the edges of my chalk mark if you don't paint all of your chalk mark if for, for whatever reason a little bit is still visible by the time you get done painting this step again don't worry about it you can either paint over it in a future step or you can erase it with a little bit of water. Once the um, neighboring paint has dried, you can just take a little bit of water on a brush and the chalk will erase that way. So if you have a little bit left, that's a way to get rid of it. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the hand. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are my skin tone, brown, black, and white. And what I'm in essence gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding highlights and shadows in order to create all the definition of the fingers and any um, contour areas so I can make, some, uh, make it appear that there's some form within this shape. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I do recommend that your skin color is dry. That first layer is nice and dry. Before you start this step, it'll be a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my brush with some brown paint. I'm gonna use this brown paint to kind of give myself an outline as to where I want all these shadowy areas to go. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm going to be making kind of a dark area between the um, inside of that thumb area to where it's gonna meet these fingers in through here. So I'm gonna take from right in this corner here and I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little bit of an outline for those fingers. So this little dip should kind of be parallel with this little dip in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that brown and just kind of rub it out into the neighboring skin tone. So it doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. This is just gonna kind of get that process started. You could even um, pick up some of your skin tone. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my skin tone just to get these two areas to blend in just a little bit more in through here. So that's gonna get us started as to where those fingers are going to be. And this doesn't even have to be a perfect um, 
curve at this point. I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown. I'm going to start the shadowy area between these two. So I'm going to give myself a line, but I don't necessarily need it to be a firm line. So you can just kind of um, softly mo move your brush back and forth, left to right, and that's going to get it to blend in a little bit with that skin tone that it's next to. We'll be adding um, more depth to it in a minute, but that just kind of gets us started. Do, I'm going to do the same thing in through here. So this is going to be this little dip part in my finger or in my model's finger. <laughs> so I've just got a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm going to put this little dip in through here and then just kind of allow it to be a kind of a soft blend or uh, section so that way it'll blend in with the neighboring skin that it has. I don't really need um, much in this whole area. I'm going to put a tiny bit of a shadow up in through here. So this will give me a little bit of a shadow on that finger and then maybe a little bit at the bottom of the hand in through here. So I just have the remnants of that brown on my brush and I'm just kind of rubbing it into that skin tone. So that's going to give me the sections of the um, hand. I do, when I'm looking at my hand, um, when I was doing this painting, I saw like the side of my fingers in through here and in through here. So with the remnants of this brown, I'm going to put a little bit of that on this exterior portion of the finger like this. And I hardly have any paint on my brush. This is just going to give me like that outside little edge to the finger. And then I'll do the same thing on this section of the finger in through here. So again, I hardly have any paint on my brush. I'm really just kind of doing a dry brush technique with the remnants that are on my brush. So it'll give me that little bit of appearance of that finger kind of turning in towards the inside of the hand and outwards in through here. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny, tiny bit of black paint plus a little bit of brown. So very little bit of paint on my brush. I'm going to put a teeny bit of a um, dark, dark uh, shadow in between these fingers in through here. You can even use a little bit of water on your brush to get this um, little shadow to be as dark as you want it. Um, the little bit of water will allow you to kind of spread it out and get it to be um, a little bit more fluid and soft around the edges. You can pull that shadow right in between these fingers just a little bitty bit. It doesn't need to be anything super dark, just a little bit to give that deep darkness. I'm going to do the same thing up in through here. So a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. This is going to give me the little crease in through here. So I'm just kind of adding to the existing shadow that I had, but I want the area to be a little bit smaller. So I don't want to um, extend this dark area all the way out. So I'm just kind of bringing this in through here, and then I'll give a couple little wrinkle curves on that finger as it is as it's turning the corner in through there. And then you can just fiddle with the, this part all you want. I'm going to add. Um, wash and dry my brush and start adding some little highlights. I just put a little more shadow in through here too so it looks a little bit deeper. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to start adding my highlights. So my highlights I'm going to have here at the tip of my finger over here and then at the top of this finger here maybe a little bit on there. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to be using my skin tone plus white on my brush at the same time. You don't need a lot, but enough so you can um, have some moisture to your brush and so you can kind of rub it out and blend it with the neighboring um, colors. So I had white plus my skin tone. Once I've got the highlight started like this, then I start picking up just my skin tone in order to get it to blend into the rest of that skin, the, uh, the rest of the neighboring skin. And then I just kind of keep blending it until I feel like I've got a good enough blend and that's looking pretty good to me. I might let it dry and if I need another coat after it dries, I can certainly do that. I'm going to do the same thing, pick up white plus a teeny tiny bit of my um, skin color. I'm going to put a little highlight up at the top of this thumb. You might not even see this one by the time we're done because we're going to have a big huge flower on top of it or a stem to a flower, but providing um, this natural kind of contour to the thumb. If you do have little peekaboo spots between the um, 
the stems that we're going to be putting on, this will make that thumb look more natural. So that's why even though we're not going to be seeing a whole bunch of this thumb or the whole bunch of the hand, providing these highlights and shadows will make our painting look more natural. So I just picked up a little bit more of the white and the skin tone so I can give a little bit of a highlight here, a little bit coming around this corner so it looks like there be the top of the finger is being illuminated by whatever the light source is and then maybe just a little bit in through here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more of my skin tone so I can get that to blend out something like this and then just making sure that I have all of it colored in as much as I want to. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of my skin tone plus white in through here just to get this to be a little bit brighter and make it look like it's a little bit up, up more. If you wanted to put little wrinkles on the end of the on the knuckle area you can just pull down these little kind of curved lines that'll insinuate that there's little wrinkles on the knuckles and if you felt you needed another coat in this finger as well you can certainly just add another coat to make sure that you have full coverage on your um, on your painting and then just fiddle, fiddle with it let it dry see if you feel like you need any additional information and again know that we will be doing um, our stems and all kinds of other details on the painting that will help to disguise any area that might not have come out exactly as you had hoped it would but as long as you got little bits of highlights and a good skin tone on there you should be good and then we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be doing the base coat for our stems and our leaves and any other greenery area that you may want to have in your painting. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black and green. And what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to kind of plan out where I want the center of the bouquet of flowers to be. I'm going to be putting a big kind of um, blocked in area of real dark colors and then I'm going to be kind of pulling out all kinds of leaves and stems and swirls and this is the part where we're going to be um, covering as much of our hand <laughs> as we want to with stems and little um, swirly pieces of leaves and stuff so that's why I didn't put a nail on my hand because I'm going to be covering it but you can certainly when we get to there you can cover as much area as you want or as little as you want. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to um, kind of anchor myself in the center of my bouquet. I'm going to put green and black on my brush at the same time and I have a good amount of paint on here. I'm going to kind of give myself a little kind of barrier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from my thumb uh, if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, I'm a little bit higher than that. I'm going to give myself a marker. Then I'm going to come up to maybe about two or three inches away from the top of my canvas and then just kind of go out from either here and here, maybe like two or three inches, something like that. And then I'm just going to swirl the paint around. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm giving myself a real dark area that's going to be kind of in the nucleus of my um bouquet of flowers that will allow for some great depth and dimension within the center of that um, bouquet. And I'm not even concerned about the edges, just want to give myself some dark green and black type of tones. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush with black paint. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of play out where I want leaves and stems and all kinds of other fun stuff coming out here. It's going to be a very freestyle um, loose, fun type of step. You don't have to follow mine exactly. Mine is going to be a varying types of leaves and then I'm just going to throw in a whimsical curl here and there. So feel free to make yours however you want. I'm going to have it kind of shooting all out throughout here. I'm going to then bring it down and have these long stems and swirls and stuff all over my hand. So I'm going to use black paint to start and then once I kind of have um, enough areas that I want I'll start to introduce some green. So you can do swirls, you can do like a little impressionistic 
um, thing of like a leaf. You can have another swirl. You can have some leaves coming out in through here, maybe a bigger one up in through here. You don't have, I didn't wash my brush. So you might see the remnants of some green paint as well, but just know that it, this is really just intended to be nice and free flowing and just have fun with however you want these little kind of, um, marks and stuff to be coming out of your center of the flower. I'm going to be introducing green to it in a minute, but this is just going to kind of get me started as to where I want these fun kind of um, marks and stuff to be. So then I'm just going to kind of, you can see I'm just having fun with the, with the different um, style of um, marks that I'm having come out. Some resemble kind of the essence of leaves. Some kind of resemble just little swirly marks. So just again, have fun with this. Yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Uh, where I am going to be having, um, obviously our flowers are going to be in, intermingled within all of these. So just know that whatever happens we'll be able to to work with it with our um with our leaves and stuff like that so i'm just having fun with my different styles of of leaves i'm i'm coming out and they'll be intermingled with petals and again all kinds of fun stuff so now i'm going to kind of travel down into my hand so i want it to look like stems and not just like a big mass so i'm going to just kind of slow down a little bit here and give myself some entry points into my big bouquet so that way i've got um some width to it and i've got some kind of semblance of um, order, I guess, if there is any kind of order in, in this particular painting. Maybe a little swirl out here and a little swirl out there. Maybe we've got some little leaves coming off of here. And again, just enjoy this process. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. I am going to be covering up part that thumb in a minute, but right now just kind of getting all these um, stems kind of intermingling up into my bouquet and now I'm going to start kind of covering my hand and bringing some swirls out into here so if you um, have areas on your hand that are still wet maybe you just kind of wait a minute or two before you um, start really loading up your your information on here but again you can hide anything that you want you can even have some kind of going over the, um, the front of one of your fingers. If you feel that there's an area that you might want to disguise a little bit more, feel free to do so. So this is gonna be totally up to you how you want to kind of um, work with these, these fun, you know, pieces of greenery that we're doing in through here. Maybe this one kind of comes in front of this hand. So again, if there's anything that, any area that you're like, hmm, on your hand that didn't exactly come out how you had planned, feel free to just kind of incorporate all kinds of additional swirls and pieces of, you know, lively greenery and stuff of course it's black right now we'll add the green in a second but right now just kind of getting all of my marks in place i like to kind of have these fluid type of brush strokes so that's why i'm just kind of maneuvering my brush in these long kind of curved lines and then once i've got um, this all in through here this is looking really pretty i'm giving it some good balance with all of these little swirls coming out here and there. Maybe this one's gonna look a little bit like a leaf and then maybe I'll have a nice one kind of coming up this left or this right hand side coming over in through here, maybe up in through here. And then once I've got all that black area on there, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start incorporating green into it. So you can pick up, I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of green and I'm really just gonna kind of have fun with almost this two-tone type of um, brush stroke. So I've got, I've got green on my brush, but I'm most likely going to be running through some wet black paint along the way. So that will provide me with this great two-tone type of um, appearance. There may be areas where you don't run through black paint and that area will look brighter green. We are also going to be adding um, some highlights and stuff to these leaves and all of this kind of 
this detail that we're putting on here. So if yours doesn't come out exactly the way that you had planned, when we after we put the flowers on, we're going to come back and do kind of a final pass on these um, on this aspect of the painting. So we'll be able to put some of these in front of our flowers and all that good stuff. So this just adds that two-tone type of effect while that black paint might still be a little wet and provide you with um, kind of a, a nice natural blend, that's great. But if, if the green just lays right on top of it, that's great too. So whatever happens, just kind of work through it, allow it to look as dark or as light as you'd like. And then once you've got this all done, we are going to be utilizing uh, we're going to use our the same brush, the medium brush, for the next step. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit more green here and there. And then once I've got this done, I'm going to wash. Well, oh, this is so fun. <laughs> I like doing these freestyle kind of like carefree things because you just you just kind of get lost in it and you start making swirls and it really. It's um, a fun process for me anyways. And then once we get this done, I'm going to wash and dry this uh, medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our flowers. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using yellow, white, pink, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pick a base color for my three types of flowers. I'm gonna have tulips, some kind of carnation style flower and some daisy style flowers. So I'm gonna go with my tulips first and the, I'm gonna have those a, a yellow type of color. So what I'm gonna do is I took my deep yellow and I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of white paint to it. This way my opacity is a little bit better and I'll have um, a, a little bit more of a solid base to it so it will um, cover that background a little bit better. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have three or four tulips. You can have as many as you want. You can have them in whatever direction that you want. I'm gonna have um, maybe one over here. So for me, a tulip is gonna have a kind of a horseshoe type of base to it. And then I usually put like three tips to the petals and then I'm just gonna kind of color it in um, for my base coat. You don't have to do anything really fancy to it. Um, I'm gonna have another one maybe over in this direction. They can be different sizes. So I've got this one a little bit bigger. So it'll take a, up a little bit more space. And then I'm gonna have maybe one, I think I'm gonna have one maybe hiding behind this one a little bit. So I'm gonna have maybe the top over in through here and maybe the bottom kind of coming out in this direction. So maybe this one's open a little bit more. You can lay them on top of each other like I'm doing. You can have one behind the other. If you are gonna have one behind the other, just give yourself a little bit of a visual um, tip or in, leave a little bit of a visual space so when you go to paint um, them in you'll have that information which one sits in front of the other one. And then I'm going to throw one down here in the bottom um, kind of right portion of my bouquet. So if you have these little pieces of your leaves sticking out, you can always put a piece of a flower or the, the top of a flower behind it. So I'm going to just kind of take this one in through here and kind of incorporate a tulip right um, behind it. So I'm gonna just kind of put the edges of the tulip and we're gonna say that this one's kind of leaning down and then I just kind of scoot that yellow color in between those, um, that green and black color. And we're gonna be doing, like I said, a final layer on those leaves. So if there's, um, any that you bumped into or overlapped where you didn't want to, don't worry about it because we'll be able to to rectify. Actually, I think I want to bring this yellow a little bit more in through there. And then um, I, for my next color, I'm going to be doing my carnations. So I'm going to be washing and drying my brush. For my carnations, I'm going to have them a nice pinky magenta type of color. So what I'm going to do for my base, I have my fluorescent pink. I'm actually going to use some brown and mix some of my pink into my brown. So this is gonna give me this deep magenta type of color that I'm gonna be using for the base color of my um, carnations. So I've got what I 
referred to as like a nice kind of magenta type of a color. These are going to be on the rounder side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of give myself a round shape, but I'm going to I'm going to make the edges of it bumpy. So you can of course put it in front of other um leaves and stuff you'll probably be able to see behind it uh, your paint might be a little translucent that's okay just kind of um, put that layer on top and if you can see through it no big deal i'm going to have a big one over in through here this one's going to take up a lot of this area but i think i want it to kind of be behind this um this tulip a little bit so again just going to kind of give myself a big round shape with these bumpy edges to it and you can have as many as you want. You can fill this painting with a thousand flowers. You can have just a few. It's gonna be totally up to you wherever your floral desires are. Just scooting this color in between these um, edges of this one. And then I think I'm gonna have one up in through here, but I, we're gonna see the side of it. So I'm gonna utilize this as the kind of the um, the leaves surrounding it so i'm just going to kind of take this and maybe give myself this bumpy look like this like we're seeing the side of this flower and then i'm just going to take that um, mixed color and just you could even um, add it with dots or with swirls as you're um, putting this base color on here and of course this is going to be lighter than this because this is has a lighter background to it but once we um, put that second coat and all the other information in there it'll be totally fine so then i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to do my daisy type of flowers so my daisies i'm going to have white daisies but i'm going to start them with a tan color so my tan color will be the base so i'm going to utilize some white paint and i'm just going to put a tiny bit of brown in it so i'm just going for a tan base so that way i'll have some good dimension when i go to um put the highlights and shadows on these petals. So whenever I do a white um, object of sorts, I usually start with a color that's a little bit darker than white in order to allow me for the um, option to put some, some highlights and shadows on it. It makes my process easier. So I'm gonna have all kinds of little daisies in through here. So I'm gonna start by just kind of giving myself this, um, these little petals that come out from a center point so I just figure out wherever I want that center point to be and I give these curved little lines coming out of it I'm gonna have a lot of partial type of daisies so if I want there to be a little daisy kind of peeking out from the side of this one I can just kind of pop peek out a couple of little petals just sneaking out from underneath that tulip maybe I have another um, one kind of coming out of here so maybe there's one that's just kind of emerging we're seeing the side of it because it lives inside this little um these little leaves maybe i've got another one coming maybe i've got a little one leaning over in through here over this daisy of sorts or, or over the tulip and of course yours can be any size that you want i think i i think i'm digging this one so we're going to go for another one of those in through here I like these partial ones coming out of the um, of the leaves that just we we put there during that first kind of carefree step so this is how you can just build something with a lot of dimension just you know if you can build it in an order that makes sense it makes for your painting process to be a little bit easier I'm going to put another one of these partial daisies kind of coming out of this one in through here these are these are turning out to be my favorite ones <laughs> as a painting. I like daisies. They're really fun to paint. And when you can paint them from the side and you can paint little tiny ones, maybe we've got a little tiny one coming out the side over here. And I'm just having some fun. Maybe, maybe I've got, mm, I want another one up here. Maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put a little one coming out here. And then I'll put when I go to finish this leaf, maybe I'll put another little leaf over there. You can just have fun. Put them wherever you're feeling it. I definitely want a big one kind of coming out over here to make its way out of this little pointy part. And of course, your um, greenery is probably formulated a little bit different than mine. So definitely have fun with yours in whatever way that you want. I think I want to see the center of this one. So 
I'm going to put these kind of all splayed out in like a spiral type of or a full, you know, you have the petals coming out on all sides of it. Mm, I'm thinking that's pretty good. Maybe, yeah, well, that looks pretty good. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide if I want any more of these cute little daisies. Maybe a little tiny one up and through here. I don't know, something like that. And then we're going to utilize our um, small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our tulip flowers. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, white, and brown. What I'm in essence gonna do with these four tulips is I'm going to be creating shadows and highlights and blending those into the base color of the flower. So my shadows are gonna reside at the bottom portion of the flowers and in between the petals. And then my highlights will be on the tips or the top side of the, um, of the petals and then I'll get them to, to blend in. So I'm never gonna have a ton of paint on my brush because I'm gonna want it to kind of dry on the fly and be able to blend it in. I will be possibly utilizing the light yellow that we, um, that we created for the base coat, but I'll also use my deep yellow in its own form too, but I'll call it out as I, as I use it. So I'm gonna start with just a, a little bit of brown paint on my brush, and I'm gonna put my shadows in place. So I'm gonna start by just kind of rubbing in this darkness at the bottom of that particular flower. I'm also going to kind of dictate or tell myself where I want the inside kind of um, of the, the two exterior petals to be. And you might find that you want more petals than I have or less petals, it's totally up to you. And then I'm going to pick up yellow paint without washing my brush and get that shadow to just kind of blend up a little bit. Uh, and dissipate as it goes up that flower. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. I'm just kind of getting that shadow on there and then I move on to my next flower. So again, I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown. I know that I want this shadow to be at the bottom of the, um, of the flower itself. So a little bit of brown, rubbing it up and then putting a little bit of that shadow in between wherever I want those petals to kind of come together and then I'm gonna pick up just yellow, the deep yellow color, and get it to just kind of blend in. So this way, I'm kind of putting a second coat on the flower also while um, I'm going through this process and it's giving me that opportunity to have some vibrancy to that yellow as well. So again, just start repeating it, going over to this flower here. So this flower is kind of tipped over to the right side. So the top of it is towards the top of my canvas. So that's gonna tell me that my shadow resides kind of on the side of this flower. So somewhere down in through this vicinity. And you just kind of work around any flowers that you might have overlapped. Um, and if you bump into them, don't worry about it. You'll be able to fix it when you, when you, fix, when you finish that flower. And then I'm gonna um, tell myself where I want these petals to kind of open so it's maybe something like that and something like that and then I've got this little piece in through here that I'll just put a little shadow in through there and then I'll pick up my deep yellow and just get these to blend in provide a little bit more vibrancy to that yellow color on the flower itself and then just get that all the way to the tip in through there and then I go down to the bottom one so this one's the one that's probably the most confusing because it's upside down. So I'd probably have a little bit of shadow from these leaves on the um, flower itself. And then I probably have some good shadow in between these petals as well. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of shadow underneath um, these leaves. So I have that brown on my brush, putting a little bit underneath the leaves themselves. And then of course I'd have some underneath the um, petals in through here. I just know when I go to do my highlight, I'm gonna have a brighter highlight up at the top of this one um, on the top side. So I'm picking up my regular um, yellow right now on my dirty brush, my deep yellow on my dirty brush. So that's gonna get that um, 
that nice richness to the to the yellow color and then I'm just doing that second coat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the highlights on them. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start back at that first one. So my highlight is going to consist of white and yellow. So I'm going to take a little bit of white. I know that I want my highlight to be on the top side of these petals. So I've got a little bit of white on my brush. I can kind of pull it down that petal a little bit like this, just a little bit on those edges and then I can pick up my yellow. If you wanted to, if the, the deep yellow was too yellow for you, you could certainly pick up that base coat that we came up with, that light yellow color. So you might find that you want yours to have a, a softer yellow appearance to it. So in the event of that, feel free to pick up that original um, light yellow or you can just pick up white with the deep yellow so any combination that's going to make yourself happy and then you just get it to blend in to that center section you can enhance I'm picking up a little bit more of my deep yellow just to make sure that they talk well together and then I've got my nice bright highlight at the top and then I just keep fiddling with it until I feel like I've got that the highlight that I want, the contour that I want, and that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to move on to my next one. So I just wiped my brush off, picked up some white paint, giving myself my highlight on the top side of these petals, and then I will blend that in with the main um, the main coat of it. You might even be able to just take that white and rub it out, um, but I find that sometimes it's easier to just kind of re-wet the brush with a little bit of the yellow, maybe a little bit of white, to just get a little bit more solid of a blend going, but whatever um, is working for you, whatever process works for you, feel free to adapt that to your own painting. And you can always layer, put more layers on. If you want it to be more vibrant yellow, just pick up the, um, the deep yellow. So I'm at this point kind of just um, altering or um, going back and forth between white and deep yellow. But again, you could certainly utilize your um, that light yellow too. So I just picked up more white. I, I wiped my brush off, picked up more white, going to put the, hot, the white on the tips of these petals and then I will get it to kind of blend out a little bit and then add my um, deep yellow to get it to blend. So I just picked up some of my deep yellow and you can see each one has a very similar process to it. I just I want them to look like they've got a little highlight and to have some volume to them and adding these highlights on them will certainly do that. So wipe my brush off, picked up a little bit of white. So this highlight is predominantly going to be probably over on this side. And I definitely have my, my petals a little bit lighter, but I'm going to say that's going to be my lightest area. Now I just picked up a little bit of uh, my deep yellow and I'm getting it to blend in a little bit. This flower is growing on me, but that's okay. I do want to put a little bit of a highlight just so we can see have good coverage um, but I don't necessarily need this flower to go too too light because it is in fact leaning down it's probably it's the farthest away from our light source at the top of our canvas so this would naturally be the darkest of all of our flowers or at least as far as the yellow ones go and then I'm going to um, do any little fiddling that I feel is necessary and then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your tulips done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our carnations. So these are going to be these beautiful pink flowers that we're doing. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are brown, that premix magenta, pink, and white. And I'm going to approach them just like I approached my tulips. I'm going to add my shadows, make sure those are doing what I want them to, and then I'll add my highlights and make sure it blends in with the mid-tone. So I'm going to start with just brown paint on my brush. I'm going to make myself a little center kind of area and then I'm really just kind of making these little kind of curved marks throughout the center of that flower. I'm going to do the same thing over on this one. So just a, a little bit of brown paint on my brush doing some curved marks in through the center. Uh, this one up here my shadow is going to go at the bottom of it because we're seeing the side of it. So I've got my brown paint on my brush 
going to just kind of bring some of that up into the um, magenta E area. And now that I've got on that, that on there, I'm going to pick up that original magenta and go, I'm going to start back at this one over here and kind of intermingle that shadow with the um, magenta color. So this, I'm just doing these little curved lines all the way around the flower. And I can even bring this all the way to the edges at this point. We'll add a little bit of a highlight on um, some of these edges in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of enhancing these little um, petals by just doing these little curved lines. And because I didn't bring the brown all the way out to the edges, then we're gonna have this um, fabulous kind of dark to light appearance that we're gonna see in a minute when we add that highlight on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this one in through here. So I've got my magenta and then kind of in between my brown marks, I'm gonna make these little um, second layer of this magenta. And again, I'm just kind of doing these little curved type of lines to it imply that these are the edges of these little petals coming out. You might find that you want yours to be a little bit more solid of a color or a little bit more of a, um, of a longer stroke. Feel free, if you have a longer stroke, they might end up looking like little roses. So you can certainly have fun with that. Gonna do the same thing up here, but I'm remembering that this one is from the side. So I'm just gonna kind of do these upward kind of bumps like this and they're intermingling with the base coat, which is the same color, but because I'm utilizing a second layer of it, it's adding a little bit more dimension. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put my highlights. So my highlight is gonna be with my fluorescent pink and white. So I just wiped my brush, or wash and dry my brush. So I'm gonna be using my fluorescent pink. I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint in it. So this is gonna be this beautiful, bright pink color that I'll use as my highlights. So when I do my highlights, I might use white too at the end, but right now I'm just gonna be using this um, soft, bright pink, and I may pick up some of my magenta as well. But I do know that I put kind of heavy magenta on my last pass, so it might still be a little wet, and it may let me play with it and um, blend it a little bit. I want the majority of these highlights to be up on the upper side of it, but I still want highlights around all of the little petals. So I'm gonna use p this pink kind of throughout the whole flower, but when I, in a minute, I'm gonna put white just at the top. So you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've got my light pink right now, and I'm gonna provide some of these beautiful, just little curved marks. I'm not going all the way to the center, just kind of allowing myself to intermingle some around the edges and just a little bit moving into the center, but not a lot as if it's just kind of giving us a, um, a nice general, uh, gentle transition from light to dark. So the edges are gonna be my lighter ones. And again, I know that some of my magenta is still wet, so this is gonna help intermingle them and let them talk together. And I'm just having this fun, um, nice impressionistic brush stroke um, experience here and then keeping it its darkest in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one over here. I'm gonna just allow myself to have these curved um, edges to indicate the type of um, little petal that we have and then just making sure that I've got all my, my canvas covered too. Now without washing my brush, I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna give some even brighter little highlights towards the top side of this flower, which is the top side of my canvas. So I'm not doing a lot. My brush is really dirty. I'm just allowing these little bits of extra light spots at the top of that flower to indicate that that's the part that is catching the light the most. And then you just fiddle with it. Maybe let it dry for a couple minutes, see if there's any additional marks that you wanna make. But once you've got it done, we're gonna utilize the same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our daisies. So these little white flowers here. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown, white, yellow, 
and probably that light tan color that I created as well. So I'm going to approach it just the way that I approached the other ones, which is adding my shadows, making sure that those shadows blend in with the rest of the petals the way that I want, and then the little highlights to them. So these ones have um, a, an additional bit of information, which some of them will be able to see the center of the flower. Um, and in that case, we'll put a little bit of detail in there as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with just brown paint and I do not need a lot of paint on my brush. If I'm gonna be doing one with a center, I'm gonna find wherever I want that center to be. I just kind of dot my paint and then I just pull that brown paint out in a real loose fashion between um, those petals. In, you can do it up the petal or in between them, just a little bit of splayed out information for that brown. If you're doing one from the side, I'm gonna put the brown down at the base of the, the petals and then just kind of pull it up in between or next to the um, those individual petals themselves. So again, I have a little centered one in through here and then just kind of splay out that, um, that shadowy area coming out of the middle. This one I'm gonna see the side, so I put a little bit of that brown in through there and then just pull it up in a um, carefree kind of manner up those little individual petals. And if you put too much, like I just put too much on that one, we'll correct it with the, um, with the base color. So a little bit of my tan in through there and then just pull it up into the petals. And I just kind of keep repeating this on all of them. Here's my center like that and then just pull it out a little bit into the petals and of course once we put the highlights on and stuff they'll look much better but we're just going to get this this dimensional element into them so i put the shadow down at the base and then just kind of pull it up into those petals i got a couple more on through here so this is one of those that it ends up being pretty systematic the way that the way that you approach it. Um, and once you've got your rhythm and your groove, it's really fun to just kind of fly through them and get them all in, in the way that you want. You might even find that during this process that there's more, like you wanna put more of them elsewhere in your bouquet. So you could certainly just go through the, the building process if you wanted to add any additional ones. So now that I've got my shadows in there, now I'm going to um, look at any of them, see if I need any more uh, blending with the medium tone. So I'm picking up that tan color right now. Some of them, like this one in through here, I feel like I did a little bit too much. So I picked up that tan color and just gonna blend it out into it. Um, and then I think, and that's pretty good. I don't really have too many of those that I, that I needed to do. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white paint on my brush. I wiped my brush off. I'm picking up some white paint. So the daisies, they're gonna have like a, curved type of um, petal when they're open like this. So the highlight can really kind of be in the middle of that petal. It doesn't have to be at the end. I'll show you on the ones that it will be on the end, but something like this, if you want it just in the middle, you can put just a little, a little dot and then just kind of pull it out in like a curved type of manner. That's gonna give you a more highlighted spot on the part of the petal that would pop out the most to the viewer. So that gives you that added bit of dimension to it. If you've got one like this, you can just simply put it kind of at the end and just kind of pull that color down that um, particular petal. So, and if you have these little tiny ones, you don't really need to do much to them. I'm just putting that little bit of white and blending it out and of course you if you feel like you need to adjust your little edges like sometimes I feel I do you can certainly do that but just adding that bit of a white highlight I'm gonna go ahead and do this one on the tips just kind of pulling it down and if I pull it down fast enough I've got this little two-tone action that happens with the um, additional colors that are sitting next to it. So again, this one I'm seeing the inside. So I just kind of put my highlight in the middle of that petal and then just pulled it out. So that way the brightest spot is not at the tip of that um, petal necessarily, but it's at the part that I feel would be popping out the most. And then of course, doing this one up in through here, just adding that, that brightness to the tip 
and then just pulling it back. This, these ones are a little bit bigger than the ones that I was down at the other part of my canvas. So just taking a little bit more time, putting the white and then just pulling it down towards the shadowy area. And of course you could certainly pick up that um, base color if you felt that you needed to do any adjusting with that. I've got a couple more over here on the right side. So watching out for some wet paint on the other flowers. So just a little bit of white, pulling that down, putting it on the, these little tips and then just pulling it down towards that shadowy area to provide me with a little bit of dimension in these flowers. And again, because I'm utilize, I utilize that tan, as my base coat, that is allowing me to get this beautiful dimension without doing much work. I'm really just utilizing that tan color as almost my, my shadowy type of areas, um, not the dark shadowy areas, but the little bit of dimensional element between each petal. It's a quick e and easy way to just kind of get that look to happen without doing much work. So again, just putting some white at these tips and just kind of pulling it down towards the, um, towards the base. And if you felt like this one, you know, or the ones down here, if that their petals should be darker, you could, because they're on the bottom side, you can pick up some of that original tan and just incorporate some of that in these petals. So you can certainly change the tonal value of these petals by just adding a little bit of that original base color if you feel like the bottom sides of them need to be a little bit darker or whatever the case may be. And then I just have those little, the inside um, marks to go. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of brown paint, making sure that the center is really nice and dark. I only have three on mine to do this to. So just adding a little bit of that brown right in the center. If yours are darker, you could certainly add a little bit of black. Then I just wiped my brush off. I'm picking up some yellow, deep yellow and white on my brush at the same time and adding these little bits of um, um, center information <laughs> inside my flower. I think they're called stamens or something like that. And you can of course fiddle with this all you want. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So get your flowers done. Put your um, small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our leaves and our stems. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, and white. And I might need go into my black a little bit, but if I do, I'll let you know. So my predominant mission here is to add some little bits of highlights and stuff to these ones down and through here. Some of the ones that are kind of peeking their, their head out in other places. And then also to add any that I feel might be necessary. So if you come into a spot like, I don't know, at the bottom of this tulip, I might want to put the little essence of a leaf underneath it. So you, this is your opportunity to do those kind of little tweaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first make myself like a light green color. So I have my green and I have my yellow and I'm gonna put a little bit of white into it. So this is gonna give me a light green type of color. You can use any combination of this light green, yellow, regular green, white, anything that you want in this carefree manner to add these kind of highlights. But I'm gonna start with that on my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of look for little spots that I feel I wanna add a bit more information to. I'm really just using this fun gestural type of brush stroke to add some, some bits of highlights. Less is more in this kind of step. You don't want, want to necessarily overdo it. I just picked up some of the regular green. Um, using different tonal values as well is gonna make this look a little bit more three-dimensional. So if you have it too light or you, you know, add too much of one color, that might make it look a little bit more flat. So if you want it to really look like it's got a lot of dimension in it, just continue to change up the, the value. So lighter in some areas, darker in other areas, little kind of just gestural type of 
quick swipes along the areas that you've kind of already designated to be these um, really pretty leaf type of areas. You can also go outside of the original footprint. So like if I have a little leaf here and I want it to be bigger, I can just kind of take that and just bring it out a little bit farther and that's gonna show a little bit more light activity on it. Um, you can certainly it bring you know, little light tips onto whatever you want. Just explore your leaf making, uh, you know, ability and just have fun with it. Put any additional ones that you want. I gotta kind of get on my tippy toes to get this one up in through here. You know, this is the air time where if you had some that you um, felt that you wanted to kind of clean up as they're touching the flowers, now's the time to do that. So if I have little ones that are touching the flowers in through here, maybe add a little, little here, little there, this is the time to do it. Um, I think I do wanna add something maybe underneath this little guy here, just to kind of, I'm adding black paint to my brush so I can have maybe just a little kind of leaf coming in front of this one. So you can hide things that, you know, didn't totally come out exactly as you wanted to. Just have fun with whatever is looking pretty to you. Oh, well, that's looking good. You could um, add some light leaves just kind of popping out in, from within here if you wanted to. So just have fun. If you feel like you want a, a leaf somewhere that it wasn't just at it. It's just all that's as simple as it gets. Just make sure that you have as many light spots as you want and leaves sticking out here and there. Enjoy the process. Make it look like it's nice and fully rendered. If you, again, if you wanna add extra stuff here and there, just do it. This is your painting. Enjoy the process. Make it look as alive as you want it to. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. I'm feeling like that's pretty good. So um, you can put this uh, medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I think I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go bottom left on this one. I'm gonna sign mine right in this little spot right here. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you would like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful blooming image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.